In a limited time during the second half of 2011, the Hypogeum, or the excavated underground labyrinth of the Colosseum, was opened for the first time to the public after 2,000 years of its rich history. In 2021, after extensive restorations and installations of facilities such as walkways, it fully opened to the public. One of the new seven wonders of the world, Rome's most popular tourist attraction and still the largest standing amphitheatre in the world, despite its near to millennia age and was the tallest building in ancient Rome. Have you ever looked at what is supposed to be the Colosseum arena floor and asked, why instead of a smooth sand floor, it is instead a complex spiraling maze-like labyrinth of ringed walls and chambers? Such complex from above almost resembles a thumbprint. Unlike most modern stadium fields and pitches which have a solid floor, the hypogeum was necessary to facilitate the spectacles on the arena floor. Below the glamorous, beautiful architectural marvels of the public areas and structures above ground lies the dirty underbelly of the Colosseum, like the backstage area of a theatre performance. Every grandiose and bloody show on the sands of the arena was made possible only through the blood, sweat and toil of the workers underground and the huge facility of the Hypogeum which was a two-level subterranean network of tunnels and cages for animals. The Hypogeum also contained complex engineering solutions in order to put on the greatest show in the entire empire. Elevators, ramps, pulleys that raised and lowered sceneries and props, and even evidence for the existence of major hydraulic mechanisms all provided the means for the most well-choreographed spectacles ever witnessed in a 50,000-seat arena. Built on the site of Emperor Nero's giant artificial lake, the site provided the means of staging naval battles in the earliest days of the Colosseum, as attested by the historian Suetonius, by diverting the city's water supply through aqueducts into the arena with corresponding drains to flush the water like a massive toilet. The process could take little as a few hours. The practicality and costs of staging naval battles in the large arena meant there was little incentive for such games after the inauguration games, and construction of the Colosseum's underground complex began instead to improve the quality of the regular games and events, putting an end to flooding the arena. The Hypogeum's purpose was to contain and hide the mechanisms that provided for the seamlessness and from the audience's perspective, magical nature of the show. Lions, elephants and other predators would seemingly appear from out of nowhere from the ground through the ramps, pulleys and elevators under the arena. Its other main purpose was to also house the gladiators and animals before the games began and to house the bodies immediately after the contests. As such, the underground complex reeked of the animal urine and excrement. All this would be mixed with a water pumping system to keep the underground levels wet in an effort to alleviate the conditions. The Colosseum might as well be the antithesis, the bane, the nightmare of all animal welfare activists if they were transported 2,000 years ago into the capital of the entire civilized world. It was the morning portion of the games, the animal hunts, animal fights, and human-on-animal fights that was the most common and some say popular. These allowed for spectacles beyond the wildest dreams of a Roman pleb spectating the games in the Colosseum. Exotic animals from the most far-flung regions of the empire would be brought in, including elephants, rhinos, tigers and lions, who would be pitted against not only each other, but gladiators and prisoners of war. What facilitated all of this? The Hypogeum and the engineering behind it. 
such as the mechanical marvels called the Hegemata, a strong hinged platform that allowed for huge animals to be hoisted up directly from the hypogeum to the arena floor, allowing for the magical surprise of the spectacle, as opposed to walking it on the stage from the ground level from the side gates. In 2015, one wooden replica of those ancient elevators was rebuilt, reportedly costing nearly $20 million for the authentic reconstruction. A crane was used to lift the replica over the arena floor and down into the hypogeum. They released an animal into the Colosseum for the first time in over 1500 years. The animal chosen was a wolf, which is odd since the Romans never used wolves in the Colosseum. The reason is that Romulus and Remus the mythological founders of Rome had been suckled by a she-wolf, and thus wolves held a special place in the Roman heart. The hypogeum inadvertently also served another purpose, that is, propaganda. It had a political purpose to show the melting pot and multicultural capital of the entire ancient world the ferocity and engineering skills of Rome, to present shows with engineered choreography never seen before and certainly will never be seen again. We're now walking from one of the underground passageways to under the arena floor. From AD 80 to 90, the arena floor was solid ground, which allowed it to be flooded but after 10 years, the arena floor became a wide and wooden structure supported by the underground labyrinth you see here. An exposed tunnel of water ran along the circumference of the hypogeum for sanitation. Behind the tunnel of water on two levels are cages for animals, which also runs along the entire circumference of the Colosseum. Considering how big the Colosseum is, and how many cages surround the hypogeum, you can get an idea of the sheer amount of animals that were slaughtered each day of the games. On the walls and floor of the hypogeum, there are at first what seems an incomprehensible amount of slots, grooves and abrasions. You can still see the long and deep grooves in the hypogeum walls. On further inspection, they appear to be made with great precision and care. They were made to facilitate and make rooms for the mechanisms which allowed for the raising and lowering of cages and elevators. Specifically, the grooves allowed room for the arms of capstan winches to be turned and various holes in the hypogeum indicate where these capstan posts were rested. Men would push these as they walked in a circle which operated the cage elevators. These capstans allowed only for an animal as large as a lion or a bear. When the cage reached the top, it opened to a ramp which allowed the animal to walk directly from the cage to the arena floor. At the peak of operations, at the height of the empire, the hypogeum contained 60 of these capstans, which were all two stories tall, turned by four men per level. Another 20 capstans were used to raise scenery and props. Here is a hole in which one of the capstans was placed.
Almost two worlds existed at the Colosseum. The airy stadium above and the dark, dank, damp Hypogeum. The Hypogeum allowed for such spectacles to occur. It allowed animals and hunters to enter the arena in an endless amount of combinations and surprising ways. Historical accounts mention how animals appeared suddenly from below as if by magic, sometimes launched high into the air from under the arena. The Hypogeum allowed the showmakers to create surprises, build up and tension. A hunter wouldn't know where a lion would appear from the countless ramps and doors of the arena floor or how many lions and what animals would appear. As the spectators above enjoyed water, mist, sprinklers, treats and snacks, even balls with tokens inside for prizes such as an apartment raining like hail from above, setting off violent fights in the crowd as they struggled to grab them, the workers of the Hypogeum suffered to get the show on the road. Hot as a boiler room in the Italian summer and cold in winter, filled all year round with strong smells, from the sweat of the workmen and fighters to the reek of the wild animals, combined with the overwhelming noise, freaking machinery, wild animals growling, people shouting, drums and horns to coordinate the workers, not to mention the roaring crowd above, it would have been a sensory overload. The Hypogeum had a lot in common with the huge sailing ship. The underground complex had countless ropes, pulleys and wood and metal mechanisms housed in a limited space requiring endless training and drilling to run smoothly during the show. Like a ship too, everything could be disassembled and stored away neatly when it was not being used. The Colosseum in its prime required immense coordination. Both the worlds above and below ground operated like a ship. Above ground, the huge retractable awnings stretched to shield the spectators from the hot sun and were operated by sailors from the senior fleet of the Imperial Roman Navy, with their background in sailmaking and rigging, who saw the opportunity as a huge privilege. After the last gladiatorial games were held in the Colosseum in the 6th century, the arena slowly began to succumb to earthquakes and neglect. The Hypogeum was filled with dirt and rubble and forgotten about. Above ground, collapsed parts of the Colosseum were quarried away for building material, while other parts, such as the huge vaulted passages, were turned into shops and housings, and later a fortress. By the 19th century, the Hypogeum laid buried under 40 feet or 12 meters of earth, and all memory of its function or even its existence had long been forgotten. For over a thousand years, the vast, deep labyrinth was not visible. It was only in 1813 and 1874 were their archaeological excavations attempting to uncover it. It was prevented by flooding groundwater. It was only in the era of Mussolini in the 1930s were in order to show off every trace of classical ancient Rome, he ordered the excavation of the Hypogeum, finally emptying it, for good, of all debris. <laughs> 